so let's call this meeting to order. This is the Finance Committee meeting. Today is October 15th. It is now 6.02. And um, here today, myself, Amy Fiden, we have Charlotte Jewel Parmar, Andy Kolpaki, Paul Benjamin, and Peter Matusko. So first on the agenda, uh, the minutes. Um, it just uh, um, some, uh, they weren't very lengthy. It was just um, some quick minutes and I had just sent them not too long ago to everyone's email. Um, so if you um, had a chance or if you would prefer, we can put it off to the next meeting, but they are there. Um, I would make I have a motion a to approve the minutes of September, September 30th, 2024. Thank you. Second. So a first from Paul and a second from Peter. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that was unanimous? Abstain. Oh, abstain from Andy. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the next on the agenda is the Hadley Media. So this is where Alex, I'm hoping you can come on and, and um, I'm sorry we missed you from before. I, I did miss that email, I zoomed right over it. So if you wanna tell us what you're looking for, that'd be great. Yeah, so we got a couple of conferences coming up. Um, one's, the, one's our regional conference and then uh, we have a uh, national conference that's actually coming to Boston um, and that doesn't come to Boston often. So we'd love to take advantage of that. Okay. Um, so the total on that, you're looking for uh, conference tickets for $700. Uh, you estimated mileage for $327.51 and lodging $1,600 for a total of $2,628. Um, Pretty much, yeah. All right. And Linda, is this something that... Um, is what we're looking to fund it is our fine um, from finance committee reserve. Uh, uh, yes, for each of the enterprise funds, um, unlike the for the general fund, you have your large uh, reserve fund that the that is set aside for the finance committee. In the enterprise funds, they have smaller amounts within their budgets for their own funds. We have uh, oh. ten. 10,000 reserves for each of water and uh, sewer is voted each year as part of their budget and. Uh, Hadley Media, their reserve fund within their budget is $5,000. So it's the same criteria. It has to come to a uh, finance committee and be an un unanticipated, unexpected um, amount that gets that you authorize that he uses out of the extra funds. Yeah. So this, this, how much does he have in there right now? Five. Five. Five thousand. Okay. Are other expenses that might bite into that that you plan on? Um, no, um, we're going to be, if any, if anything comes up, we're going to try to make sure it, it all goes in the FY26. Um, but I don't really, I don't anticipate anything, any use for the, uh, reserve fund at this time. Uh, what do you hope to gain from visiting the, uh, the show? Yeah, so it's our regional conference and our, um, uh, national conference, um, so pretty much like any other trade organization, um, <clears throat> they'll have all like vendors there. Um, uh, take a look at what they have um, for new and upcoming equipment that we could potentially use. Um, and they all there's all kinds of workshops that happen. They don't have a conference schedule yet of what they're going to plan on doing, but they're usually pretty good. How many days is this? Um. One, well, they're both two-nighters, but for the, uh, the one in December is going to be an overnighter uh, because we have our digital equity uh, fair and public hearing have to be here for. Um, and I believe the national one's going to be two nights. So how many total nights? Three overnights. Three total nights? Mm hmm And how many people are going? Just me.
Sorry, I'm, I'm the hotel guy, so I'm just looking at the hotel price. <laughs> no, I get it. I, looked, <laughs> I mean, hotel. I looked at um, <laughs> oh, prices Sorry. <laughs> in those areas, um, and I'm probably going to be the one who goes to like the, the one with the waffle machine and not the fancy breakfast that they have. So, um, no, I just um, see the $1,600 for three I'm nights. I'm probably... So That's... I probably won't spend all of that. Um, you could put me in a Super Eight motel, and I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would want wish that upon you, but still, uh, it, it was just just questioning the budget. So I, I understand it's a yeah I mean, big it, budget, it, but it's it, for three nights six sixteen hundred dollars. So that was originally budgeted for four nights, but I had to take that one night off. Where is this conference located? One's located in Mystic, Connecticut. One's located in Boston. I know Boston isn't cheap, so maybe yeah. one, of those, one of those nights is probably a lot. So yeah, with parking and everything else, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on uh, the the reserve part of it when was the last um when the money comes in for the hadley media that we get i believe does that go right to the hadley media budget that doesn't go to any to reserve correct correct um so last time we put in reserve last time we uh, put in reserve it, it, amy it's, it's 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 we voted as part of the budget that reserve and then it, it's gone at the end of the year so it isn't a reserve that's set aside from them. They do have, we also call these reserves, though. They're basically um, un, un, some, um, the, the certified reserves as of July 1, we don't put money into the reserves at all, but just like the sewer and water fund, we uh, have their, um, the balances or their reserves, their cash reserves are recertified each year. Yeah, I just so, was wondering, because I feel like it's going to go down, and you do use it once in a while, and it's been going down yeah. quite a bit, and I just so, thought it would be gone pretty soon. Yeah, so if you're talking about the the, the larger reserves balance, yeah. um, I guess I went down the wrong path with you. Um, that amount is, um, it's like between hundred dollars and $105,000 right now. Oh. And we don't put more money in the uh, 70 something that comes in each year goes directly to basically the budget. It, 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 it rarely comes um, in to amount that is higher than our budget. So we're not, that amount is not increasing. It's decreasing each year. So this is marching us towards the, the greater solution actually of where, what we're going to be able to do with Hadley media. So that's a, that's the bigger question. I know that the gas is a little bit more expensive on the Connecticut side. What is it when it comes to um, reimbursement per mile? What is the rate now? Is it 48 or 52 cents per mile? 67. What is it? 67 cents. 67 cents. Okay. I believe that. Let me double check. Yep, yeah, it's 67 cents. Okay. Yep, it went up a cent and a half from last year. Okay. Uh, does Do we have a motion on this, or is there any more discussion? Is this going to increase the technology of the equipment that you're using, and that's what you're looking for, like you were saying? Um, what are your learning opportunities to go into these conferences personally that you'd be able to use in the future for the time? So, I mean, I don't, I don't know because they don't have the schedule up yet, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but usually they have like updates from, at least on the, the last national conference I went to was over Zoom. They had um, updates from like the NTIA, which is the National Telecommunications. I can't remember the rest of the uh, acronym. Their party, that Department of Commerce. Um, 
Um, they have, they'll have legislative um, updates as well um, and, and more workshops around that as well. And it's, that's what the trends look like for the post the past for those past um, conferences. Um, as you know, um, when it comes to community media and now our recent venture into digital equity, a lot of it, in my opinion, is going to change. A lot of it's going to change. Or no, I'm sorry. Nothing's going to change without, without legislation um, to keep these centers running and to keep our communities um, digitally equitable as well. So there, there's a lot on the legislative front that I could strongly advocate for doing. And plus the plus there's a plenty of networking opportunities to, um, to go around. Well, I'm supportive of uh, continuing education. If this is at least one thing you could learn that could be beneficial to you or helpful for the town and maybe updated or faster equipment, I'd be in support of this. Easy on the state and lobster. motion. Amy? Yes, we need a motion. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. This is an estimated budget because it's subject to some movement once you finalize your your uh, appointment, you know, your uh, travel arrangements. Uh, okay. That we approve the. You want to move, make it 2700 Is that what you wanted to do, Amy? No, 20, 20, 26, 28. Okay, I make a motion to approve 20, uh, 2,628. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was 2,700. No, it's, it's 26. 26, 20, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second. So, yeah. And I, so didn't I, have finish, a I didn't finish, and that's approval for conferences, to attend two conferences for um, the um, Hadley Media. For Alex Lamarche to attend. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Paul and a second by Shardul. Right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So that was five ayes. So that is unanimous. That passes. Thank you. So, thank you so much, everyone. Let me know if you have any other questions or concerns. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Yep, absolutely. All right, so now down to it. Let's uh, <laughs> jump in to, right into the, uh, we got the warrant, we got we got all kinds of stuff happening. We got capital, we got CPA, we got ambulance, we got, we got the whole thing. So I don't know if Mike or Linda want to take it away. <laughs> it's up to you, Linda. Are you feeling, feeling better from, uh, from earlier? You want to go for it? <laughs> Yeah, I got my shots this morning, so, but I'm a, a little wobbly. Yeah, I'm, doing, I'm doing fine. Me too. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it sort of gets to your, after a while, I go, why do I, I don't usually get headaches. I go, it's funny, I have a headache. My husband said, you got your shots this morning. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay, um, okay Amy, uh, we sort of had a, a, a meeting this afternoon. Amy was, a, or this morning, Amy was a part of, where would you like to start? You, you want that, that, um, that spreadsheet that goes down through each of the articles and where it's coming from, or do you want to jump into capital, which is ready, which is good to go because we had capital meeting this afternoon? Uh, why don't we, yeah, why don't, since right now we jump into capital first and then we go to that meeting afterward, go to that after, yeah. Okay, I am going to go there. So Linda's here with Capital, but Paul, if you you're part of Capital, so yes. Yes, free to jump in any time or if sure. you want to mention something. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, we approved the chart that you see here um, are the capital items which are going to be done out of reserves and borrowing from the levy and also a small amount towards the estimated free cash. Um, and uh, this was voted, I believe, unanimously this morning. Uh, uh, for approval now, and all of the items that are on capital that we, larger items that are going to re require some type of debt exclusion are going to be put on uh, the town meeting in the spring next year. 
Um, additionally, there was a redirect of 4.2, if you can scroll up just a little bit or scroll down. Uh, we also unanimously approved the redirection of some of the water tank funds. As you know, uh, previously the water tanks were, uh, there was a uh, $310,000, which was approved at a town meeting in order to repaint them. And then as they got into looking at the condition of the painting and what it was entailed, it was determined that it would be uh, uh, much more um, uh, fiscally prudent to replace the tanks themselves because of their age and uh, what was involved with repainting both the interior and the exteriors of these. And this is our water system. So we approved at the last town meeting um, the uh, uh, water storage tank replacement. Uh, and so this is just a redirect of previously approved money that would have gone to a repaint to go towards the cost of the replacement and design for the replacements that's required. Um, and this was, again, I, I, uh, I think I made both of these motions and they were passed unanimously. Uh, but this is a really nice way to see what's coming up because it's all in one, um, one um, section here and you can see where the money is going to be taken from, but it's all within the levy. So none of this affects our, our open, our tax rate at all. And um, these are all uh, things that we really need to do. I, I took a tour recently of the water system with the DPW and, you know, we have pumps that need replacing, and these are all things that are essentials. We can't really, you know, we need to do these things. Sure. All right. Did that help, Linda? Yes, very Did much. Give you a break. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. The the total of what we're being what is being acquired through the process in four point one is is shown there is nine hundred twenty one thousand five hundred dollars. So some of them are being borrowed, as, uh, as as Paul explained, the top ones are being borrowed, got free cash, and then the rest is coming from water and sewer reserves. So um, it's it's a it's a, a large figure, but it's spread out over a number of funds and uh, means of uh, of purchase. So um, I think it worked out pretty well this year. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other? I, I, you, we, you mentioned quite a bit about the water tanks. Can you tell us about some of the others on the top um, items that are there? Is that Paul or you? Or... Paul, well, second, you want to... I know a little bit, the second ambulance is that we have an opportunity to pick up an, another uh, secondhand ambulance that I believe is almost turnkey, has all the equipment on it as well. And this is a very good opportunity. You know, we're fortunate there are some communities that uh, because of uh, they have uh, larger funds, um, they replace equipment a lot faster than we do. Um, our our people tend to work the equipment um, as much as we can. And and so we we don't have uh, secondhand equipment that's going to, um, you know, necessarily, especially when you're dealing with certified equipment like police cars and ambulances and fire trucks. So we're able to pick up this second ambulance, and I think it's uh, crucial that we keep building up that department now that we've made a commitment to work towards it. This is a very good um, deal for the town. The other ambulance we had, I think, cost us 22000 to purchase it from Northampton. Um, but then, of course, there was, I think, fifty dollars or $60,000 or so that had to be put into it to equip it and um, you know paint it and some other things that needed to be done. Um, so this, is, this one's almost turnkey, apparently, with all the equipment's already there. Um, so that's a good, uh, uh, and the, right. well, the other, the other thing that I would, that I would add is that, uh, that ambulance is also actually coming according to the fire chief with, um, a whole lot of fairly new equipment that mm -hmm. is normally, normally has to be, uh, purchased separately, um, which is vastly more expensive than what we would be paying just for the ambulance itself. So, um, the amount of, uh, the amount of money that we're saving and the amount of equipment that we're getting out of that 75,000 is um, it's a, it's a really good deal. We just, you can't pass it up. Right. And then uh, the, the other thing is that um, he had um, remember that this is, the, these are the five uh, FY 25 section of the capital request, but we had uh, department heads submit um, a five to 10 year plan. And I think for three or four years down the road, there was a $600,000 ambulance in it. So because we can acquire this and the opportunity is now, we uh, he has already pulled the $600,000 off the request and now that's out to 10 years from now instead of three or four years from now. So 
Um, you can't tell, see that savings just from looking at this year, but it is substantial. Yeah. And that's that's part of what we had discussed earlier, Amy, with you know putting the, all of this on a on a single article. I know that some people like to, um, you know, some people may want to talk about any one of these items or multiple, you know, these items and maybe pull them off and d discuss them more at town meeting. But, uh, you know, that's kind of part of what we were talking about earlier as far as how much work actually goes into putting this together that, you know, we sit down with the department heads and really kind of drill down on these things. And when opportunities like this present themselves we can make adjustments to that five-year or 10-year capital and push things down the line. Um, just to give you an example, Paul, I don't want to step on your toes, but just going to that second item, um, you know, the building renovation. So part of what the public safety, public safety was requesting is a study was done way back in 2013 uh, on our building. Um, and, you know, we were somewhere in the area of about a $4 million dollar renovation for the building to bring it up to you know what we what we are currently at now and so what we did was is we sat down with Linda and we talked about you know affordability and um, you know when we would hit that uh, the point of no return so to speak because obviously we're not putting four million dollars um, on the capital request so we talked about kind of spreading these things out um, you know, year at a time or year by year to, to be able to get some of these things done as we move along. Um, we did the exact opposite, actually, with the next one on the list, which is the schools, because the school was requesting very small amounts of money to go through their IT upgrades, um, which were kind of spreading things out. And with some of the things that we can see on that five and 10 year capital schedule, we thought it might make more sense to put those, you know, to, to, uh, push them together and make, you know, one or two larger requests spread out over two or three or four years, as opposed to, um, you know, $5,000 every year for the next 10 years or, or something like that. So um, that's, that's pretty much how we handled like those top three. I don't know how much further you want to go down, Amy, but um, town hall HVAC, kind of speaks for itself that was that's been in there for I think a couple years Linda um, yes but it actually we kind of crashed on us this year uh, right. we have a part of the building with no air conditioning so there's but now we're starting to put them in the windows just to get us through yeah and part of the HVAC situation um, as far as air conditioning goes also affects heating as we're rolling into the the colder months so we definitely need you know want people freezing in the building um, the computer server, I don't want to say the word placeholder, but um, there is a grant, a, a community compact IT grant that will be opening on January 6th, which we will be applying for. Um, this request needs to go in now just as a backup. I suspect we will get the grant for the computer server for our building. Um, whether or not it covers the entire 27.5, I don't know, but um, there's a good chance that we will get either a good portion, if not all of it. Um, stormwater on it. Linda, do you want to, do you want to explain the stormwater one? Uh, the stormwater, this is, uh, we're dealing off with a uh, runoff into the, um, into the Connecticut river. And this has been, uh, sort of mandated that we tend to this for at least five years. So our initial, uh, we put about $350,000 into it by a borrowing article about five years ago. Um, and it has taken that long to use it. We didn't borrow it all at once. We borrowed it as we spent it. Um, and uh, so now uh, those those initial funds are gone and we need to um, replenish and continue. I can't say exactly what's going to happen with each with each of these phases, but uh, it's going to be 50,000 this year and 50,000 next year. What we want to get to is the point where we can predictably say, let's say if we knew it was going to be 50,000 a year for the next uh, into the future uh, to take care of and to maintain um, the the level um, of protection that that we're responsible for. Um, then we would put it into the budget. But at this point, uh, the spending has been quite uneven from 
from year to year. It's like every other year we're spending a lot and then less. So it seems the way to go for now is to just manage it year by year. And maybe even next year we'll, we'll be able to come up with an amount that we can put into the budget so that it, it's not handled as a capital item. And it somehow gets baked into the system that this is just an obligation that we have going forward. Thank you. Um, everything below the excavator are all the things that Paul uh, had mentioned that he took a ride around with uh, with Scott and they discussed um, a lot of the, you know, the building issues, the redesign of the tanks, um, the match for the grant is, uh, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, all of that stuff is water reserves and sewer reserves to take care of those issues. I think the excavator, Amy, is probably the, the uh, mm, I don't know what the word is that the issue that may get discussed or people may wish to discuss at town meeting that one's going to be half um, from water reserves and half, you know, borrow within the levy. Uh, and I'm going to prepare Scott to be able to explain, um, you know, based upon how much equipment he's gotten from capital over the course of the last couple of years how you know how old is the last excavator that we have is it still in working order why do we need the second one um and things like that i'm gonna i'm just gonna prepare them to be able to answer questions which might come up for that issue um, for that one issue uh, i don't know that there's going to be a ton of questions on uh the rest of the stuff below there the callahan well repairs and things like that like i said paul took a ride around and saw the disaster that some of that stuff <laughs> Yeah. the way some of that stuff looks in the building that they're working out of and things like that. So um, I don't know that there's going to be a lot, but I think the excavator will probably come up. Just a guess. Do we know what year it is? I mean, is it, well, first of all, is it a replacement? Um, the ex, the, the excavator that he is, that he's requesting is specific. The reason that he wants it um, half out of water and and he originally Linda didn't he originally ask half out of water and half out of sewer but we just didn't have the reserve the money uh, in the reserves in sewer no he, he's always between, been between the two he was suggesting that he could take more out of sewer than out of I mean I'm sorry uh, lean over towards taking more of it out of the water since uh, rather than out of borrowing within the levy, he thought it might go over better. But it, but the price tag is still what the price tag is, I don't think. And, and it needs to be um, the only reason we should be changing the proportions if he, is if he if, if they can substantiate that right. it's being used two thirds, one third versus 50 50. So I, I think uh, ultimately he decided to leave it right there. Um, I, I was going to. Too. I think it's a matter of, of use, uh, Amy, for this one. I just, I don't know much about the other excavator and how they were able to purchase it and what year it is and what the main use of it is for. But he is, he expressed to Linda and I when he first brought this to us and we had our first meeting that the use of it was going to be water and sewer because that's, those are, that's what he wanted to uh, pay for it out of. Yeah. Do you think maybe? He could come to our next meeting so that way we could ask questions um, because we're not voting tonight on these things. We're just um, getting all the information so we can um, think of any questions we want to ask Scott and he could come to our meeting and we can ask him these things. I think that was a good point, Mike, as to saying as to what is the usage for or how much it's needed as to how much what the price tag is because uh, like you said, two years ago, we spent a lot of money on a pumping pump truck that was well yeah. over 600000 And it's like, how many times has it been used for having something that's just sitting there brand new? So I think yeah. it's a good point uh, to bringing that up. Absolutely. So, Amy, I can absolutely make that happen. I'll make sure that uh, that he's at the, the f um, next Monday's uh, meeting. Okay. And since you're inviting people, if you want to also invite the chief, um, fire chief, because the ambulance, I don't think is as big of a deal, but he's got there. This this year's all um, is a lot about him <laughs> and what he's going to do. So I think he's important to be there too. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, the twenty first. 
the the next the 20, meeting, right, Amy? Next Monday. Yes, yes, the twenty first next Monday because we're going to put our recommend vote next Monday with recommendations on the warrant, and then after that, then we can talk to the select board on what our rec our thoughts and recommendations are. Amy, should I um, should I have the fire chief prepare more to discuss? Um, the budgetary issue with the ambulance services, not necessarily oh, yeah. the 75,000 for the oh, actual yeah. ambulance. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there any more questions on the, the capital stuff? No. So you're gonna hold all votes for next week? Um, so um, what the next thing, too, is, um, and I don't know if we want to just get this out of the way, we can maybe jump to CPA on the warrant. And then Andy is part of CPA, and he can maybe tell us a little bit about those, and we can get those right out of the way, too. Okay, let's see. Shared. Or art. You met so long ago. And you're so efficient. You guys get it out of the way early, and here we are, yeah. still just dragging our feet. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can share this one as part of the warrant. <laughs> there we go. How's the, oh, I don't want, I don't want to double there. Okay. Uh, yes. Let's see, it starts with uh, your extensions. I think that that's, that's just a couple things. So it uh, starts with article seven, Andy. Yeah, yeah I mean, with, with six, they're making progress now that. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, on the, uh, on the Hockenham Cemetery fence, we all agreed that things are starting to move ahead there. So we're gonna extend that some more. Um, and Let's see. Well, there's a lot of information about Article 7. Uh, and this was uh, uh, regarding, uh, you, some of you may know, they're replacing the playground structure up behind the elementary school. And they're looking for CPA funds for a poured in place uh, rubber um, uh, ground cut to help reduce injuries and, and the like. Kids falling or tripping um, in the play structure. There has been uh, wood chips, which uh, over the years uh, deteriorate, need to be refilled, and then they compact, and then they get to a certain uh, level where they're no longer safe for the kids to use, so they have to be hauled out. Uh, and um, this, uh, while the wood chips are less expensive over the lifetime of uh, years, I'm putting in the place uh, rubber, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, to me, it, 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 it's similar to uh, an NFL field where they have all the little rubber ones. Um, and it is for, um, again, for kids' safety. Um, and um, so after, it's, it's, it's a lot of money, but at the same time, um, it's a 20-year span. So um, that was uh, supported by the, uh, by the committee. And there is an awful lot of information that the um, uh, the folks supporting this project went through um, regarding the different options and the costs and the guarantees and the warranties. And they're still hunting down to find um, the exact vendor to meet all these qualifications. But these uh, these are the numbers that they had to work. Any questions on that? All right. Um, I was just looking it up when it comes to uh, rubber on the playgrounds on the health side. It says rubber mulch can contain harmful chemicals such as heavy metals from the recycled tires. It can also emit gases that can be inhaled, especially when the material gets hot. Yeah, they, they went through a lot of that, including latex uh, and potential latex allergies. So this is uh, special stuff. Um, that is one of the reasons why it's a little bit more expensive out here. Uh, when we were doing the Circle Park 
a long time ago. Um, this was one of the items that came up uh, because of uh, these these uh, all these factors that come into play here. Um, you know, you can't just use ground up tires and and uh, you know put them on the side there. They have to be a, a particular type of rubber that is you know hypoallergenic. It's been um, not going to off gas, not going to get contain metal shards those types of things that uh, they go through. And, and the companies that they're looking at are all companies that provide these for municipalities, either in their schools or in their uh, municipal playgrounds. Um, so we felt that they were, uh, the, company, the committee was on the right direction getting high grade materials out of it. Uh, and you know, they did a cost analysis versus um, constantly replacing the, um, wood chips over the course of uh, the same amount of time. And uh, while the wood chips are more expensive each time, uh, ultimately you wind up with a pretty similar cost factor over 20 years. And what would be that total for the rubber matting or for the chip rubber chips? 290,000. 290,000? Uh, for this article, yes. Yep. They're taking, uh, you see other numbers there because they're taking from two sources within CPA, mm -hmm. uh, the recreation portion and the uh, open oh, space oh. reserve, but the total would be 290,000 out of uh, close to $2 million um, CPA fund. Now, is this a rubber mat or is, are these the little rubber chips like mulch? Uh, rubber what? chips is the way it was described to me. You know, okay, because basically well, you know, they're, they're like little rubber dots. Okay, because on what I'm, I'm looking at, it says uh, installed uh, and poured into place the rubber surfacing. So I don't know if this is like a rubber mat because uh, something that would be a rubber mat that uh, absorbs that heat a lot, people aren't going to be wanting to ride on, walk on it because, you know, kids and I've got them, they like to go barefoot and you have either the hot mats or you have to deal with slivers from the wood chips. Uh, well, they talk about think... when, when they use the word "poured in place," it 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 it, it shouldn't imply you shouldn't get a vision of a liquid. Um, you know, these are just uh, you know, like you do. I think look at it as like um, when you're using hydro seeding. You know, you're mm -hmm. kind of spreading it out, and that's how they put it down in 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 different layers and and pack it in as it as they go, so there aren't any voids and like. Um, Versus, uh, you know, a a, um, a mat around a track where they actually have resins and the like, and that solidifies. That's that's not that. This is actual loose rubber bits uh, that are uh, chips, if you will, that are um, made to uh, stay together and not fly out. But some of it's going to fly out. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. But it's not going to be like sand all over the place. And uh, you know the, the the committee did ask of the uh, the folks at the within the school system uh, who are investigating this to uh, consider all these things, and they're all uh, the vendors that they're looking at. Again, they they dot their eyes and cross their t's because of the environment in which they work uh, with um, students and municipalities. Um, you know, certainly things that are. That could create injury or health concerns are not part of their formula. Personally, I'd rather be spending $290,000 within 20 years of time throwing down mulch than one shot as to wherever this is coming out of at one shot. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many tons it would take to going about filling in that play structure. But that's a lot of money at one hit where um, so you're spending five grand for mulch one year, that other $285,000 could go to be something else. So uh, I, they, I, you know, fortunately, the CPA committee is in a, I mean, CPA funds are in a position where that is available now. And uh, for, quite frankly, we don't know, given what we saw over the past four or five years, the cost of things. It might be, uh, you know, it, it's interesting to put something down now where you've got a cost that plans to last 20 years, where 20 years from now, you don't know what the cost of the last load of, of mulch is going to be. It could be 
exorbitantly expensive, like everything else has gone up. Well, at least you're buying it at today's dollars, and you don't forecast it down the road that you, you know, what you might spend based on the net present value. Uh, and again, the, the the committee is in a position where um, he had the no, the numbers is going to escape me. Is it two million available? One point five. So, um, um, you know, we talked about. I don't want to get too far off track, but you know, came up the um, uh, the the athletic field expansion because we're in such a, a, a good financial uh, position there, CPA funds. Yep. A lot of those questions were have been asked and answered within uh, this pretty large group of people involved uh, at the school and uh, they did a lot of research. And um, if, if you want any of them to come and explain further, uh, I, I know they'd be happy to. Um, they they have a lot of information. They had I, I don't uh, I didn't keep what they had things in writing, Andy too. But um, their number one concern certainly price is one of them. But they were also concerned about what would be the safest and best things for the kids. And and, so. uh, and being frugal about it, uh, and not mm -hmm. you know not once fall. So it's a lot of uh, both school administration and parent volunteers. Uh, as you might expect, servicing the elementary school. Right. Right. So to move along, we can actually even go instead of even having them. If we could probably just go and get more details, I, it's on the Hadley Media on the YouTube, and we yeah. can go out and watch that meeting just to watch that portion of it and probably get some more details on um, some of that. So the yeah, Hadley. Yeah, it's a very lengthy, uh, a lot of detail as to what they're looking at for the specifications of the product. Um, and I don't have that with me. I apologize. We certainly can run drum it up. But as Amy's saying, it can check out the um, uh, the CPA meeting um, where you get the specifics. OK, if you don't mind, Angie, will you go through the others a uh, few? Sure. Uh, let's see. Historical. Uh, yeah. Um, the two thousand dollars for the historical uh, reserve um, was they're going to do a comprehensive preservation plan summary. To be honest with you, this number seemed really low on how they're going to pull this off, but they're going to evaluate all the assets in town and try to, you know, try to determine the um, prioritize. Uh, the value in which we need to preserve and um, assess uh, what is out there. They're going to do a walk through the town, um, looking at all the various structures. I mean, they have things like certainly common. You've got the Hockenham School. You've got North Hadley Hall. There's all these structures in town and, and uh, or any of the um, cemeteries. Got a lot of different spots that they can go and and assess the value and then put together try to put together a present a present preservation plan, um, and um, this was money they requested to uh, put that together. And you know, I appreciate the fact that they're going out and trying to take a, a methodical approach rather than just grabbing this item or grabbing that item of assessment. What is that? It actually does have a lot of of uh, um, historical uh, items and areas of uh, for consideration, but rather than grabbing, you know, deerskin maps or arrowheads, and you know, it's great that we we're able to preserve them. It's good to take a, a, a step back and assess what we have, and then try to prioritize. And that's what this one is. So, Andy, it's the it's the historic group that's actually doing it. We're not hiring a company for a plan, are we? Uh, they are are hiring. Um, they are bringing you know, somebody in to help them. But the historic commission is uh, taking point on this. You're muted. All set. Thanks. Just one question. You want to keep going? 
Article 9, I'm sorry, I don't want to scroll up. Article 9, uh, that is for the, um, as you know, the Goodwin Memorial Library had some funds set aside for previous projects and that kind of stalled. Um, so what they want to do is um, uh, take some of that money that was set aside for that and even though in 2014 there was a space analysis performed by um, town uh, employees, uh, they want to uh, take the opportunity to bring in a professional to do an analysis as to uh, the spaces that are available. And before we sink money into gold, uh, Goodwin, uh, what is the best way to approach um, the, the preservation of Goodwin, given the amount of money that it would take to bring up the code. So I think this is, um, once again, a, uh, a logical approach on how to deal with the uh, growing pressures on town hall for space. Uh, and, you know, certainly the expansion in staffing, Linda can remind me of the facts of how many people we've added in the past few years. Um, but the, um, uh, you know, the, the growing requirements on each town to have different staff that we didn't have 10 or 15 years ago. And it's just the, the new environment that we live in. So they, they have to be housed and have spaces to work and keep their files, et cetera. And um, this is uh, reassessing what we have at Town Hall and Goodwin and the money to do that uh, to that study. Is this all being requested by the select board? Is that where it's coming from? So the, the um, yes. that last one, Amy. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be considered to be coming from the select board. The last one was a project that Carolyn had started before she left, and so Jennifer and I uh, completed it and submitted it to uh, CPA. Okay. Thanks. So that's the end of the CPA articles. So now you want to jump into the uh, the sheet that you showed us showed me earlier, Linda. And let's see. There it is. Okay. Share screen. Is that showing up? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get it a little bigger. All right. So this is um, this is a sheet I started doing about two years ago for select board and for finance committee. Um, it, on the left are all of the articles that involve financing of any kind. Next is the description of what that article is and finally what is being asked for. Then we each have, we have all of the funding columns. As you see, we have a lot of places money comes from in town, raise and appropriate. That's where most of our budget comes out of, uh, uh, free cash. Uh, that's what we have left over in our coffers at the end of each year. We wait to have it certified. It gets certified as of July 1 each year. We don't know exactly where it's going to end up, but the best guess at this point is one point, uh, one, a little bit more, $1.146 million. And hopefully, uh, we will definitely have that by town meeting, hopefully sooner than that. Um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the spending is out of free cash, then water reserves, Sewer receives sewer reserves, Hadley Media reserves. General fund stabilization, sewer impact fund, CPA funds. And in this, this year, opioid funds for the first time, we're starting to spend that down. And then we have our, our borrowing, um, borrowing column. And that's part of the uh, 
capital that we just went over. So we've already gone over, we went, uh, Danny, Andy just went through seven, eight, and nine. Those are the three CPA articles. We went through number four, which is capital articles. Um, Amy, do you want to focus on ambulance uh, services at this time? Or maybe I back into that and explain why we are talking about funding it the way that we are. Uh, yeah. If you go. And then yeah. also mention the, um, you know, the, the, you know, the union negotiations. Yes, which is also in the, uh, okay. We have um, in the, um, the, the general fund budget and the enterprise fund budgets, most of the, uh, many of the increases in here are because of the union um, negotiated raises, uh, which should be finalized uh, maybe even this week, I guess. And um, I'm trying to think whatever we have, what else we have a number of other uh, items that have to come out of the after were added to the budget. Um, Mike Mason and I worked together and uh, we were able to cut quite a bit out from the increases that were being requested, mostly on the basis of, well, wait and see if you really need it. Let's see how it goes through the year. Last year, there were funds turned back in. Let's let's see how it's going. If we, we don't want to put money into a budget just in case. Um, in some cases, they wanted they would ask for an increase because of a line item was going to be run out, but we also know that they might have other expenses that were underspent last year. So we're just, we don't, we try to hold on to the free cash that we have and let me explain why. So down here is the calculation for each of these areas of each of these funding sources. What are we starting with? And in, in the case of what we don't have certified yet, uh, these are best guesses. What's in each of these funds to begin with? And then this is what's been the second line is what we're what we're proposing to spend out of each of those categories and then what would be left over. So in the case of free cash, we rely on finance committee the last two or maybe even three years, Amy, uh, that has relied on using free cash to balance the budget, free cash that remains available as of the Springtown meeting. So We've been trying to use less each year. Last year at, in, at uh, annual town meeting, I think it was something between between seven hundred and seven hundred fifty thousand was spent out of free cash. Um, as you see, we're asking for another uh, two, another two hundred plus to be added to that budget. So we figure, really, we would like to have eight hundred thousand going into the next um, going in to have available going into the annual town meeting to be able to apply to the FY26 budget. Um, at this point, the budget increases that are reported here are their requests and not our final decisions. I haven't gone through because we also haven't spoken with some of the department heads yet, but this should come down about 50,000. So it looks like we might have 760,000. We did have some a couple surprise uh, things come in that we really do have to fund, such as um, the amount that is needed for unemployment. We have quite a bit more unemployment cases this year. We've had years where we've had zero, and it looks like we've spent the full, uh, we will have spent the full annual allocation in the first quarter, which means we're looking for another 45,000 in that, which is again, why we don't wanna have little amounts sitting in various budgets that might not be used. There are some large items that we really do need to have it for. So backing into it then, um, if we can get as close to 800,000 as we can, that, that means uh, cutting the budget and spending as little as possible in these other areas. And yet they still need to be spent. So. That is the long way around of getting to funding the ambulance services this year. We just can't do it out of free cash and have money going ready to use for the 26 budget. We are proposing for the first time uh, that ambulance be funded this year out of general fund stabilization. If you recall, what this is uh, the idea of the ambulance services that with the, when we take them over as a town and we, when we can get to the A level of services being provided 
it will be providing quite a bit more in income and the um, ambulance service would then be paying back what we have been advancing them in free cash. And therefore it would also be, we will start with them reimbursing the town for the general fund uh, for the stabilization account. So you want to take that, Amy? Does that sound that about cover what we discussed? I think uh, for, for ambulance, ambulance service. Yeah, so the ambulance service, I'm not, as many of you know, I'm not a big fan of t ever taking out a stabilization, but this the ambulance service is like a startup business. Um, what they're looking for is we have been putting some money into it. Um, the 350, we're looking at a one-time thing. This is a loan. Um, we're looking at possibly discussing more, maybe having maybe 70,000 come out every for the next five years to pay it back. So this is looking at a lot more of a loan from stabilization to help a startup business get going. The thought is they're supposed to be on their feet and I'll be, you know, self-sufficient. So the other thing is ambulance service. We, I mean, that is a big thing we have to discuss. It's not something that, um, even if it, it, some people think it's a moneymaker, some people may not, doesn't matter either way. We don't have a lot of options here because the ambulance service, when we first looked at the ambulance service at one point and we put bids out, we only got two at that point. Not that there isn't more or that we couldn't get another one now. I'm just saying we only got the two, one being action and one being Amherst. So I'm, I'm just saying that it's something that we put some money into. We have some good equipment. We want to try to see what we can do to make this work. Um, but it is something that we seriously have to look at. We have to decide, you know, look at, okay, so if this, what, what, what if um, they, we don't get into the um, ALS, which is the advanced life support where you can start billing more? Um, you know, when is that going to really start? Because we need to make them self-sufficient because we can't keep doing this. We can't go again next year. We can't keep, we already ran out of free cash to give them. We can't go start running out and use up all our stabilization. We have to figure out something else. Um, so, you know, this is, this is to help start up. And then we, this is a lot bigger discussion for later. We have to discuss it some more afterwards. And so, so just to add um, to what Amy was just saying um, and make it really clear, I did have a conversation with the fire chief today. Um, I wanted to prepare him and, and just so everybody knows while, while we were talking about CPA, I was emailing both him and Scott to make sure they're going to be at the next finance meeting. But I had previously prepared him for this discussion. Um, I wanted him to be aware that we were, Linda and I were going to make this recommendation uh, that it was a loan um, and that, you know, what Amy was saying is that as they stand right now, what they're making, uh, what the estimates are, is that it would be that 70,000 number annually. Um, I wanted, I prepared him today to be able to discuss what the future holds with the finance committee and with the select board as we move move ahead in that we'd like to know when are we going ALS? Uh, when can we expect um, to, to have the types of, you know, the revenue, the receipts that action is making in our town right now? And so that 70,000 is basically the, that what they're making now, BLS. So once they go ALS, you know, they, they could pay this back in, in one year. Um, but we just need to we need to have that information we need to know where this is going and i think that will help you all make your decision in future years but the recommendation for um you know this year to be able to cover these costs and move into fy26 is that like amy said i mean i hate to doom and gloom this but we don't have any other options she's exactly right um this is what it is for right now. We have to figure out a way to come up with this. And if you do it this way, there at least is a mechanism to pay that money back and put it back where, where it comes from. And if you do it the other way, 
the free cash is gone. And we're, you know, we're, we're back where we started and FY26 will be the same thing. Are, are these, um, this money, is this for operation or is this for capital or, or I mean, is it for equipment? What, what, what it will be, will, what will it be used for? This is their operational budget. This is their, uh, their salaries, uh, their uniforms, um, just, just like the fire department budget. This is the, uh, the budget for running the ambulance services. We have a number of employees now and, um, and, and all of their expenses along the way. And this so, is just for one one year? Correct. Um, so, they, so right we now have, we're only we're only making seventy thousand a year, roughly? That's right. Is that is that revenue or is that income? It is uh the actual our our portion of ambulance service of um reimbursements from the insurance companies for the ambulance rides. And um, so revenue. I, yes, it's so revenue. That, so if they're running at, so they're really running at like let's say four hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year in terms of their operational budget. Right, it is over four hundred. This is there was money left over from last year, what? Which is why this is three hundred fifty because it, uh, we did fund um, we did fund it at the annual town meeting to make sure they made it as far as special town meeting. Um, and and so how many years, this has been what, for two years, three years? I think this is year three. And year over year, um, have the revenues gone up? Well, we didn't have revenue at all the first year. and The revenue only began, they had to get up and run. <laughs> You have to get going before you can do no, something. I understand. I'm in business. So, I mean, it's just really, it's really hard. Uh, I understand I think that. that. The I'm first saying... money in was March of 24. Yeah. And so, so oh. each month, so, and then there's a three month lag and from when the services are provided until the bill is paid. Uh, so each month they're collecting anywhere between three and $10,000. So how many months of collections do we have we had? We have had since March. Of this year, so, so we have about uh, right now we have about fifty thousand. Okay, no, I'm just I'm just trying to understand yeah. when when is the when is so we are rolling. We're rolling at the B level right now. So it hasn't even been been a full twelve months of no. collections. Okay, correct of of, of money okay. in. Yeah, it hasn't. Yeah, Shardul, that uh, that seventy thousand is a is a fire chief estimate basically of what he thinks that we he would do am, annually with that B-level service. Of revenue. So we, yes. it's not going to go above that. We, we're kind of stuck there until they get to the A-level. Is that, uh, does Dan have more to offer on that one? The ambulance started running, I believe it was end of October or early November of last year. So it's been less than a year. Right, the collection start, uh, the first money came in in March. But the, but we've accrued, but we've been accruing revenue since since about eight, about eleven months ago. About November, yeah, November. So it's just about three months of lag, yeah. And it took them a while to get. So our our first month was good because it was really two months worth. It took a while to get all of the bank connections and 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 I think they switched collection companies. At some point, they weren't able to get rolling with one of them, and they got they switched to another. So that was just a, a startup delay. Um, so that's why if they started in October or November, the first money didn't actually come to us until March. And the timeline to get to that next level is, is, I guess Mike is going to provide that. That's our unknown. Okay. So that's what we want him to come and talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Just to echo what Amy said, it's just, so it's not a trivial amount of money that we're spending to to get this going. And there has to be a, just like any business, you have to have a business plan and it has to be kind of something that's followed and tracked and understood by everybody. Yep. I have a pro forma perhaps that shows where the revenue, what the expectations are against fixed expenses. And yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, because if we're going to the A level, does that does that change the expense side of things? And then um, are we going to have to, uh, in terms of qualified people and so on and so forth? And then, like, because realistically, we're, we're you know based on the current burn rate, we're we're going to have to re have receivables of, of half a million plus, you know, very to to make it sustainable. Seems like. So and that's not, it's not unrealistic, right? I mean, from well, it has to be realized. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's, it's not. It could be un. Doesn't have to be unrealistic. Unreal, it had just has to be. What's the What's the point when you're going to realize those? Mm -hmm. And and what are the steps to get to that point? That's that's really the the business question. And the cost of equipment on the ALS is higher. There's more. There's the ambulance itself, the equipment, and so on. So we have to make sure that we're, as we build equipment, that we're building equipment for the future, as opposed to we're suddenly going to have this vacuum where we're going to have to up, up that ante also. Right. But the amount of money that you're going to have to put on reserve to replace equipment and so yeah. on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'd like to request, and um, I'm, I'm looking for... Uh, Mike, to send it to the fire chief is the uh, asking for a five-year plan on on how where we're going with this. Um, you know, what, are we going to need more people? That kind of thing. A five-year plan. We also want to get some data. Um, you know what what's been happening with the action, so we can see what action is bringing in for income, and what can we expect. What was the data from the last three years of action? So this is what's happened in our town. And this is how much, what kind of money they've brought in. So what can we expect from them? I mean, if we're taking that spot over, so. And the equipment requirements that we're gonna have to get. Yeah, that's a good question, Paul. We can ask Mike if this ambulance, the one that we have plus the new one will be sufficient um, for ALS. I know that they have to be in AL, have to do one year of training, but I think they've already started that one year. So I don't know when they will complete the one year and if they'll be ready with these new, new ambulances for that. I guess I would have to hope when you, uh, when you factor in what Chardul was talking about, as far as a business plan goes, I would hope that the equipment aspect of it is included when we talk about his five-year plan, um, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll see. Um, yes, those two things were on the list uh, as well as the compensation study, Amy, that you asked about and you know wages uh, for, as we talked about, he's probably gonna need more personnel, uh, more highly trained personnel in order to make this happen. So those three, those three items are, are on the list. Um, for me to kind of prep him to be able to answer some of those questions. The only other thing I see down the road is like, if we can't keep this in a, its own special account where we, where we take care of this, you know, the thing that scares me is it, if it becomes part of our, uh, just another department in our general fund, we can't afford that right now taking on a whole nother department, which means overrides and everything else. So this is, would be the best solution I feel. Um, but uh, just like Hadley Media, if Hadley Media doesn't, uh -huh. if, if for some reason we have to move Hadley Media into our general uh, budgeting, it's not something that we're ready to do. <laughs> but those are things that might be something we have to look at down the road. Okay, so what else do we have on this that's left? Um, I, I do see a few things at the bottom if we want to jump down to 10, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Um, you will have details on this for next week because we are going to have a complete draft of the warrant probably ready for, I know Jennifer's still working on the assembly. I have things like article by article, but it has to be put together. And I believe it's gonna be all set for select board meeting. To, oh, that means tomorrow, Mike. Is it gonna be ready for them? Okay. 
Um, so let me just tell you what they are. So then you, you'll see the different categories. Um, this is uh, the special accounts. I could pull it up, but I think this is just as, uh, as well. We have uh, special accounts. We have trust funds. We have um, revolving accounts. Um, we have grants. Uh, we, these are all in their special funds. They're not part of our, our general funds at all. They are, the money comes in and is handled separately. Uh, sometimes the, those accounts are overspent, um, whether that was uh, an, an over, oversight. And I'm going back years now. This is, this is a cleanup article. I'm going back years where we've had something that has, got, has had negative, uh, negative fund balance for quite a while. Um, so what happens is when we go to get our free cash certified each year, those negative balances get, get deducted from our, what, uh, what they certify our free cash to be. We just need to get them cleaned up and out of there. And uh, once we pay them off and, and fill in those holes, that's basically what this is. We're filling in the holes from the past and, and, and cleaning up and being ready to go forward. And then after we get there, that's not too bad, 20000 After we get there, it's going to become, you see, we've got these cleaning up the prior, uh, car, prior fund balances. It's going to be just like this. It's going to be an annual thing every year. We make sure, and, and maybe we won't even have those negative balances. Maybe we'll spot earlier in the process that something was charged to the wrong account and it should have come out of a budget. So we'll, we need to stay on top of those more than we have in the past. And so this is step one. Let's clean it up. All right. Transfers to capital stabilization is 12. This is the finance committee article. We've had this in each year. Um, it, it was something that uh, finance committee decided was important that we put money away. This is not the regular stabilization. This is the capital stabilization. So there have been years uh, where 50,000 was put in. Um, yeah, one year. And then uh, we used to fund this out of Oh, with sales tax for a while, uh, maybe we'd be able to fund it out of uh, another revenue source going forward. But right now it was decided we have to start putting some money into this uh, separate account. So um, given this free cash situation, I said it. I'm the one who said 10,000. This is this is your call as to what the finance committee wants to do with that. Do you want to talk about it more now, Amy, or you want me to just review the rest and scoot through? No, yeah, I think you can scoot through. I mean... It, it's just something, it's just a good idea, kind of like uh, OPEB. I mean, you're putting money in all the time. And and I think we, we draw down the stabilization on the capital. And I think we need to build it back up and start building up. So that way we have money when, when needed. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, we do, only can do what we can do. So <laughs> that's all I have to say. Yep. I, I think by keeping it on there, it's always a uh, top of mind awareness. You know, each year you think, what can we put away? So, um, all right. The, the next one is the employee compensated time fund. Uh, when an employee leaves, we pay them, uh, the, the, you know, if they are, they're unused, vacation, sick, various uh, benefits they get when they leave. Um, benefits as in payments for their unused time. That's basically exactly what that is. Uh, we set that up a few years ago. The reason we wanted it in a separate account was so that we didn't have to be anticipating at budget time who was going to be leaving the next year. So we just have this stable account where we put some money in and then we have when we have a retirement and we draw it out of that account. The thing is, we haven't put any more money in since the initial ten thousand uh, dollars in this year alone. Uh, with a number of departures, uh, we are probably going to be spending close to 50000 just this year. So um, I suggest that we put 50000 into the account. If that's what we use, we'll still have that 10000 balance. But like the transfer to capital, station, capital stabilization, I'd like to see this on as an annual one, too. If we only put five or $10,000 in a year, that means that we will not get uh, hit so hard with a $50,000 a year, which is what happens. Okay, and um, the, uh, the, the last one, select board contracts, we have a couple of obligations and funds that were set aside in, or that were kind of earmarked one way or another uh, out of the budget to be spent in FY24. They didn't happen and they were not encumbered. Um, do you want to go into more what those itemized ones are, Mike, or uh, one was for? Um. Yeah, so one of them uh, was for the form of government study that's currently happening. They had their 
first meeting last week and um, are getting into the getting into to, you know looking at what our form of government is here in Hadley. Um, the estimated cost of this project when the when they engaged the Collins Center is um, ten thousand, a little slightly below ten thousand, I believe, um, because of the fact that we've already engaged this company and are working with them and the funding was not there, we have to kind of get on top of it and make sure that the funding is available for when it's completed. Um, the uh, other, the second item uh, is for the current town administrator search firm. Um, this request is 20,000. Uh, we have three companies that, um, that we've engaged for um, estimates. Um, that's on the high end of things. It will likely come down several thousand, but it is something that uh, we do need uh, money set aside for. Um, and the last thing is $12,000 for the solar project study, which the select board directed to be done, I believe, this past June. Um, I wish I could speak more intelligently on all of that, I haven't had a chance to watch fully the select board meetings, but if you wanted to learn more, July 17th and July 24th select board meetings this past July uh, were when they discussed it. I did go through some of uh, what was talked about and ultimately where that 12,000 comes from that the board voted unanimously um, for Carolyn to uh, to to um, locate the, uh, you know, identify funding for is $7,500 for the actual application to apply for this study and 4,500 from an engineering firm for the schematic design, which is necessary to make the, you know, to apply for, for this. Um, it's specific to landfill, so a landfill solar project and, um, it, uh, essentially, they will do this. They will. It's a. It's essentially a feasibility study to see if it makes sense for your community to do this. And uh, EverSource is one of the the matching partners on it as far as uh, cost obligations go. But um, that's your forty two thousand for those three items uh, for that the the select board uh, adjustments. Are you going to be talking to the select board? until next week's meeting for us prior to us because I've just thrown it out there to the potential of the senior center library having it be like UMass has their garage having that being a big giant solar garage in a way because uh, I know there were just some numbers thrown out the money that it would cost just to be getting three phase out to the dump was going to be a ton of money where I know the senior center has got three phase and you go 400 feet and there's route nine that has three phase. Yeah, uh, Peter, I, I, I spoke briefly with, uh, we had a meeting earlier this morning um, where we, we did talk about this and Molly did suggest that some of those issues had been discussed at these two meetings. Uh, and I'm guessing the select board heard enough of what they wanted to hear that they did vote yes to continue down this road. Um, David Phil, I believe, was one of the uh, one of the individuals who I think was on finance at the time that this went through. Um, so he probably has a lot more information uh, on on that particular issue. But um, mm -hmm. th this is going to be discussed again, and we are actually going to schedule another. Uh, select board meeting next Wednesday so that this board, the finance committee, can meet with the select board and kind of flush out anything that still needs to be discussed. Just saying that there might be other options. Oh, yeah. Just to I, throw I, them I, out I, as the other placements options, you know, the future for repairs as to, you know, we would discuss that for next week or whenever we meet. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think that we've gone through pretty much all of the articles. Am I right? 
Uh, let me just back up. The prior year bills is a standard one. Uh, capital articles we talked about. The cleanup of capital articles. Yes, Amy. We've been through. We've been through all of them. Okay, I have one question for you, Linda. Um, if we can just. So we said that about our free cash is going to be 1.1 million. We're looking to keep aside because we know we're going to need it and we for the next year's budget even though we're trying to go down every year but we realistically know that we will need some free cash mm -hmm. to, to get through next fy 26 we hold aside eight hundred thousand. that's going to leave us three hundred thousand left so i do have a question linda if that's three hundred thousand left of free cash we have here anticipated $434,636. Where is the other $134,000 going to come from? Uh, we are, this is the, these are the requests of the budget increases. We are cutting about 50000 out of that. I just didn't want to put them in there. We need, uh, we need to talk with the uh, department heads. So there's, okay. there's 50, um, so that leaves you 760. Um, I think we talked about 800,000. It could be 40 more. Uh, we could, we could uh, take five there. Take five there. I just wanted to, so it's in the works with that. Those are some of the numbers we're looking for. You don't have a special bucket somewhere else that. Right. Oh no, we don't have it. We're done with ARPA. Those were the days. Those were the days. We don't have the ARPA anymore. We're not going to use the stabilization fund for general budgeting purposes. Uh, that's why we had that very specific uh, request for funding the ambulance out of there. But no, we're not. We are looking for other alternatives. If we can trim a little here and there and just get close to eight hundred, that and and. I would like to get the final free cash figure in and, and see if even that much is, is realistic. So um, we're doing okay. We're getting there. <laughs> and we also know if we need to, now we don't. Uh, there are some things we can do with the 26 budget. Uh, if, if we have to do some more trimming when we get there, but We'll do everything that we can at this point to keep the uh, keep the hit on the free cash as low as we can. Yep, that's fine. I know you're still working on it, and some of these numbers will be tweaked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I guess unless we have something else, it's it's time for Paul. Uh, I'll need for that uh, a motion <laughs> to adjourn. Second. All right. All right. So we have a motion by Paul and a second by Peter. All in favor? Uh, roll call. Amy, roll I think Amy did roll call, yeah. yeah roll call. That's right. Roll call. Amy, yes. <laughs> Paul, uh, yes. Charles, Paul, yes. yes. Peter, yes. All right. And Andy has stepped away. <laughs>